In Pennsylvania, and in most other places, but we're concerned with Pennsylvania law here, a divorce can be fault or no fault. And either of those can be contested or uncontested. For some reason, when we first got no fault divorce in 1980, people somehow were led to believe that if you filed a no fault divorce, it meant that you were going to get your divorce whether your spouse wanted it or not. That's never been the case. No fault simply means that no one will be blamed. In other words, the divorce is no one's fault. If you read a no fault divorce paper, which we call a complaint in Pennsylvania, even though we're not complaining, it would just simply have a couple of names, a couple of addresses. It would say that uh, the date and place you were married and that you didn't file for a divorce before. And it would say that the marriage is irretrievably broken, which means it's broken and can't be saved. But it doesn't say which party did that. That's what no fault means. So to get a no fault divorce, if you're separated less than a year, you will need your spouse's consent no matter what, no matter how much money you're willing to spend, no matter how much time it can take. If your spouse will not sign when you've been living apart for less than a year, that divorce can't go through. If you're separated more than a year, then under certain circumstances, if your spouse doesn't contest, that kind of divorce would go through without your spouse signing anything, but that doesn't happen in a low cost, no fault divorce. For a low cost divorce, your spouse will have to sign. So that's fault and no fault. Now let's talk about fault, first of all, briefly, and contested and uncontested fault divorces. First of all, any type of fault divorce is going to be expensive because there has to be a hearing and the lawyer has to go there with you and you're going to testify and give the court the grounds that you have for your fault divorce. If your spouse does not show up, that divorce will go through without your spouse signing anything. Your spouse will simply just have to be served some papers and then ignore you from that point on. The drawback, once again, is the expense, usually a few thousand dollars. That's for an uncontested fault divorce. For a contested fault divorce, the money just goes skyrocketing on you into moderate four figures, sometimes five figures, and it's very messy. There are hearings, your spouse is there, you're there, and you each have to have people testifying that one of you deserves this divorce, and it just it can take forever. It can be appealed. Most people just don't have the money for a contested fault divorce. So let's move into no fault divorce and contested and uncontested. Um, uncont uncontested no fault divorce is very simple. It's just a matter of waiting the particular time periods and getting both parties to sign. Very simple, no court appearance, and in my case, no travel to my office. It's all handled online and through the Postal Service because we're going to need some original signatures. If you're separated more than a year, we'll only need one signature from your spouse and there will not be a 90-day waiting period. So that would save time for the divorce. Now, to contest a no-fault divorce, if you're separated less than a year, your spouse simply needs to refuse to sign the papers and it can't be granted. After a year, if, he still, if your spouse still will not sign, then you cannot qualify for a low-cost no-fault divorce because that is a contested case and would have to be refiled through a local lawyer, once again, at great expense. So the key to getting a simple, uncontested, no-fault divorce for a low price is both people being and staying on the same page and being willing to sign the documents they need to sign. Without that, your divorce would be extremely expensive, would take a long time, and no result could be guaranteed.